Welcome back to our second chapter. Uh, like we talked last time, we're gonna go over installing on local and then we're gonna jump into more uh, detailed concepts. We're gonna talk about the flow files and everything. I think it's gonna make more sense than me and my ugly designs. All right, so let's go over the agenda. What are we gonna do today? We're gonna download the resources for NiFi. We're gonna set up some local um, system requirements. In my case, I'm installing it on Mac, uh, but it should be straightforward for Windows as well. We're gonna edit some config and we're gonna start NiFi and we're gonna go a bit over the UI. All right, so let's jump into it. <laughs> Right, cool. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna open a, a web page. Um, by the way, you have to have a browser installed for it to run. So we're gonna go to Apache NiFi. First thing that comes is gonna be Apache NiFi Apache Org. So you wanna go to Downloads, and you wanna download the latest, um, the latest version that we have here. So we're gonna go to fifteen point three. You're gonna choose the mirror that you better get down uh click on it and download so i'm not going to go through that i already downloaded it on my local so what i'll do i'll close this window and uh i'm going to open the command line so in my command line here uh an item for who does have let me just fix this window here cool in my opt um uh, folder i have a folder called source Now that we have it uh, downloaded, um, let's go and unzip it. But what we're going to do, we're going to unzip it into uh, opt uh, slash nifi. So the command we'll use for this one would be unzip nifi and then into what directory. Um, so let's just put it in opt for now. Oops, sorry. So what I'll have to do, I'll have to jump into sudo. Forgot about this. Let's just go to opt sources. Clear this so we can put it up. And what we're gonna do next, we're gonna unzip. Cool. We're gonna wait for it to unzip. Go back to our OPT and see that we have a folder there. So for the aesthetic, what we're gonna do, we're gonna move NIFI 115 to NIFI. So now let's jump into NIFI here and just go a bit over it, um, its components as they are here. Right. Oh, sorry. I need to do, I need to create that alias so I can stop typing ls SLA. cool so let's start with the configuration so let's jump into the conf directory and here we'll list the files so we're just gonna go over bootstrap.conf and nifi properties so what is bootstrap.conf and what is it used for in nifi so um allows us to configure uh, how NiFi should be started, and that's from the perspective of resources. So let's just open it and see what's inside it. All right, so that didn't work. Let's use Vim. Cool. So now, if you can see, uh, we have couple of parameters here but the most important ones are this obviously where the configuration and what the lib directory is if your installation is much more different is not default you should touch on this the graceful shutdown in seconds so the graceful shutdown in second is like uh, when you instruct nifi to shut down um we'll wait for this amount of time before he will start killing threads and processes cool 
Uh, now let's go over this too because these are really important. Java Arc two and Java Java Arc uh, three. Okay, so these properties uh, uh, they represent the Java heap memory size. Um, pretty much, uh, if I'll do this, let me just make this example. If I would edit this and say 15, 12 megabytes and 1015, 12 megabytes, what this tells me is that NiFi will start with pre allocated 512 megs and its max cap would be 1512 megabytes of RAM allocated. So for now, let's just leave it like this. I'll, I'll just leave that edited. Uh, the, red, the other will, I will just go like, what's going to be the garbage collection that he's going to use. I'll, I'll leave this as default. No, most of the time you will leave this as, as default. And for our installation, we're going to leave this um, as default. Uh, you have Azure and Amazon, um, uh, let's say credentials, um, uh, uh, property files that you can push into GCP as well. So these are like in early version, you will not have this, but this is here. Um, so those are the main uh, information. But if you guys want to go in details uh, on, we're going to go in details actually in the optimization part, but for now, we're not going to do that. So we're just going to go and change those values. And mostly I wanted to, I wanted to show that because in some cases you might have environments where, or an operational system that will not having will not have a lot of resources so you want to lower that especially let's say when you get out of memory that's where you want to go and make the changes into your um into your bootstrap and it's important to keep in mind that the bigger the java heap is the um the slower the garbage collection is going to work so there's there's a trade-off there but we're going to talk about those trade-offs in the future now let's go over NiFi properties. So this is, I think, uh, very important one. We're not going to go over the the entirety of um, of the properties. Probably we're going to have a, a video tutorial where we're going to go, but I think that's a boring part. We're just going to touch on the most important one. So that's going to be your host, the your web host, and your port. So by default, in this latest version. NiFi runs securely, so you will generate a an user and a password for you out of the box. So, like I said, it will create a user and a password by default, but we're gonna, it's very complicated, but we're gonna see how we're gonna change that. But now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to find where is the, what is the port number that he will start off. So, if you can see here, out of the box, he populates the HTTPS uh, information. So he tells you it's going to run on localhost and our default port is going to be 8443. So when we're going to start, that's where we want to go to that UI, uh, that address on our localhost. If you want to make it, if you want to make this unsecure and you don't want to, let's say, use the user and password, what you need to do is set the properties here for HTTP and unset the property here and there is another property that tells us that it, the, the installation is secure or unsecure we're not going to go do that because nobody wants to be unsecure we're just going to leave it as it is so what we're going to do next we're going to we're not going to make any change to that one we're going to go back and now we're going to see how we can start nifi so if we go to dot bin See here we have some executables. Uh, you can see in case of Windows, you're gonna use your .bat file, and for us, we're just gonna use this particular uh, nifi.sh. So let me clear and jump back up. Let's go over some options that nifi.sh provides us with. So the way you do it, nifi and basic help. So this is gonna give you some information. So you got start, stop, decommission, run, restart, status, dump. Diagnostic, status history, install stateless, set sensitive properties keys, set single user credential. After we start our instance and we're going to observe what user and password, and let's say you don't want to set the use single user credential, you want to go over the path, whatever NiFi provides us with user and password. 
how we're going to get that user and password so without further ado let's go and say myfi dot and start so it tells us that java home is not configured he's going to use this bootstrap and now if you go down and we're going to go to logs we can see that in the log folders he creates three files nifi users bootstrap and nifi app so if we go to uh, nifi bootstrap you can get all the information about the service starting so it tells us that yeah resources resources was all were allocated and the service started the service started now nifi app takes takes over so if you're going to do a tail because this is pretty massive and let's see what it does uh, if you see as a matter of fact the password and the user was generated so for the use case what i'll do i'll just copy this all right copy and i'll keep it in memory so right now it tells us that nifi it's up and running and it actually tells us that the web server uh it's available at this location so what i'll do i'll just open a window so let me go here and drag a window here okay cool so let's try to access nifi so we know it's a secure one so it's going to be https localhost 8443 all right now because we don't have certificates and all the bs uh it doesn't want us so what we do accept the risk and continue now the final endpoint would be localhost port and slash nifi once we get into this page he's asking us for that user and password that he created for us at runtime so if we go here um, as a matter of fact let me just uh, jump into my notepad notes paste this in Matter of fact, he didn't copy them. All right, so we can see them here. Usually, the way the way you would do it, um, you would pretty much do a cat on the NiFi app log and do a grep for generated. There you go. <laughs> He already moved forward with the log. So what we want to do, you have to be very careful. That's another thing. Like when you're going to manage a NIFI installation, he creates a shit loads of logs, but we're going to see how that. So yeah, we can see that we have the user and the password. So now let's go, since I have the user and the password, let's go and copy that and paste it in. You can clearly see that this is created in a way that is like, this is a one-time use. They don't want NiFi doesn't want you to, or Apache developers, they don't want you to use this ongoing. They make it really hard for you to remember it. Oh, Mozilla just crush. That's not ideal. <laughs> um all right. Let's paste in the password. Um hmm, that was awkward. There you go. That's an M1 for you, Mac. You pay a shitload of money and keeps crashing. All right. Now we managed to log in. We don't want to save this. All right. So congratulations. You have your first NiFi local installation. We're not going to go over this for now. What we're going to do, we're going to go back to our command line and we are going to change this user and password. After we make the change, we have to restart or bump NiFi. Otherwise, our changes won't be applied. So let's see how we're gonna do that. Let's clear this out. We have to be in the in the um, the binary file, the bin, so where we can run the NiFi command. So here we're gonna run NiFi. Uh, set doesn't continue, so we're gonna have to type it single user credentials and here what you're going to give it you're going to give it a user and a password and there's a bit of a typo there so 
I'm gonna make it easy peasy. I'm gonna make it admin and admin one admin. Right. Admin one one. Is that gonna work? Yes. Alright. So this one is gonna create an entry in this particular file. He actually tells you, hey, I created an entry in this one. But in the meantime, we're gonna go and look at that file. Uh what we wanna do. As a matter of fact, let's go to Nifi because maybe he he will be able to log us in. Okay, so now if we go to admin and uh, what was it? Admin one, admin one. Right, still not valid. So what we have to do, we have to bump Nifi. Restart. You know. So let's go and restart. So this is going to restart a service and it's going to try to put it back up. All right. So in the meantime, let's go to that particular file and see what is he talking about. So it tells us that he made an entry into conf right under login identity provider. So let's go and do a login cat login identity providers. Cool. Uh, and let's try to find that particular user that we created because it has an entry here actually best way would be to type right so you can see we have a property actually let me jump into it so we can see what how does that look we're a bit running away from the purpose of this video but um I think it's important to know that so yeah you can see that you have a single user provider type of identifier the user is admin and the password is encrypted so this is this is this is cool so you're not going to see the password in plain text in your configuration file so if you're doing some code repo and you're pushing this from one side to another you don't want people to see that in clear text cool now let's jump into nifi and do a refresh on the main page uh Let's type admin, admin one, admin one. And we're good to go. We're not gonna, uh, actually let me update. All right, so this is the canvas. So just to recap what we did in this video tutorial, we download our resources. We make sure that we have the single requirement, I would say in i5, um make sure you have a J java install which is a jvm we looked over some main configuration basic introductory parameters we talked about the java hip start and um, uh, max hip size and then we started and we got our first access in i5 after that we set up a user and a password that will fit ourselves and we can remember cool so in the next tutorial, we're going to jump back into the boring stuff, which is concepts, some information about the flow files and the components in the UI. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Give me a thumbs up. I'll, it will make me feel good. And uh, if you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.